Right, everyone. Uh, good to see you here. The room is uh, almost full, as always. Uh, we're going to start to uh, talk about Tizen RT, which is the, the lightweight and the smaller brother of the full-blown Tizen for real embedded devices. So uh, this is talked by Philippe Koval. Thank thanks, you. Thanks. Yeah, it's nice to be here again, uh, all of us are here. So yes, um, I'm a software engineer. I'm working uh, from Samsung. I belong to the European team. And uh, if you have interest in two all kind of uh, use cases, demonstration, and if you want to set it up uh, home, uh, feel free to ask me. I will try to help you to reproduce or improve what I'm shared. So first I will introduce you about Tizen and focus about um, software platform for embedded uh, very constrained devices. And uh, then I will just share some tips to get started. So let's go on. There is a lot of content on my slide, so I will just share for you to have a look at Afterwards, not uh, you don't need to read everything. <laughs> so yeah, Tizen is an operating system that is uh, uh, bundled into many, many, many products. Uh, so it's uh, in terms of uh, millions of products. We have TVs, we have uh, the smartwatches, uh, a mobile phone, which is uh, not as um, it's so sort of a fraction of the market of the mobile phone, it's not that important, but digital appliance, uh, you have all kind of uh, devices, uh, vacuum cleaners, so I will not make the list. We are not from, we are from open source. So what I want to just focus on, if you look at the support of Tizen, I just listed uh, a couple of devices, they are quite powerful. Uh, Devices, even if they fit in a, on a watch, it's quite similar to, to your computer you used a, a couple of years ago. So w there is a part where this um, operating system doesn't really match uh, very constrained uh, requirements. So <laughs> what about? Uh, so it was uh, uh, branded as the OS of everything, but uh, is this uh, what I've shown previously? It's a Linux system and probably it will not address every use case. So we have to find a solution to also uh, address uh, constrained device. So there is a different class of constrained device, but if you look at the lowest one, it's a really, really constrained. This means less than uh, 10K, 10K of RAM, and uh, you have only 100 of uh, K for, for the ROM. So probably le very less powerful than your first computer when you were a kid. <laughs> so to currently, Tizen RT is uh, focusing on three types of uh, configuration. Both are, uh, all the three ones are using ARM CPU, and you have the smaller one to the higher one. Uh, probably it's some things that would be difficult to, to bring the full Tizen stack on it. So today I will speak about uh, Cortex ARM R4, uh, which is quite powerful, but uh, not uh, really suitable for the right Tizen. So Tizen is built on the Linux kernel, and the Linux kernel is flexible. There is a, it's available on every, every kind of devices. You have even, I know about people have managed to make it running on a light bulb, but it's not very efficient in terms of, uh, of uh, footprint or power consumption. So there are some effort to reduce all the requirements, but we have a different approach. So the, if you don't want to use uh, the mo probably the most uh, flexible operating system, you have to develop by your own or use an existing operating system. So there are many f uh, different kind of products. I will just mention a few which are open source because this is what matters. And uh, um, if you are considering to move your development to constrained device, I'd say something which is really relevant for yourself and for your team or your company or your business is the learning curve and the ability for software developer to get into the, the new operating system. Because usually people, once they're comfortable with one technology, they try to fit with it and they don't want to learn everything again and over again. Licensing can be also an important uh, topic. So let me explain about the origin of Tizen RT. So first, it was an in internal product project in Samsung about uh, different use case about collecting sensor from <laughs> collecting data from sensor on uh, constrained devices, and uh, we were it uh, IoTVT, which is a software stack for seamless communication and um, seamless connectivity between uh, devices, was used. So it was a project that was 
using IoTVT, constrained devices, and we uh, needed an operating system, obviously, to run this, and the Notex kernel was used to build uh, this project under the name Tiny Yara. And then it evolved over time, and um, it was released to public in the uh, year 2016, and uh, then it was rebranded into Tizen RT afterwards. And that Tizen RT is not only the basic, the base of the operating of the um, supporting system; it's the wall stack where we have a lot of features. So. Let me just get back on Notex because it's an open source project. It's really inspired by the Linux. If you're comfortable with uh, any Unix system, you will find you will feel like home. You have a virtual file system, all your peripherals are accessible through a device. Like uh, you can have a proc or slash dev, something that uh, you're using on if you're developing on Linux. You have a C and C. Um, C library, POSIX API, you have uh, C++ support also, everything is using the new tools you are maybe comfortable with, make files, for the configuration you're using kconfig, you know when you're building your Linux kernel you have all the settings you can select, this is the same, uh, same uh, logic. And uh, in terms of features there is uh, some support uh, for network and uh, something really Really interesting is that uh, you have a, a different uh, process model because you're not loading the binary at uh, and running the executable table. Everything is linked into the firmware, and it's quite configurable. And um, the requirement for an hello world before somebody asks can be very low, like so about uh, 16k for just uh, booting the system. And the support of the for the hardware is quite uh, good. So. Let's have a look uh, back at uh, Tizen RT. So this is a wall architecture. So there is some components that have been mentioned in uh, this discussion before, like uh, this one from Benjamin. <laughs> and I will just go into detail about uh, some feature. So the first one I want to mention is that uh, you can build application on top of the system using JavaScript. So that's quite uh, challenging. And you can, uh, if you're really interesting, go to Ziron, my colleague. Where is she? She will talk uh, after, uh, not the next one, but the one after me. So IoT.js is a runtime for JavaScript running on the JavaScript interpreter for constraint device. And this is running on Tizen RT. So if you know about Node.js and V8, this is something very similar but very constrained. So something um, quite um, challenging for Samsung is to make a system that will be readable on IoT device that's supposed to last not forever but a very long time. So there are some efforts to try to change what have been done in Tizen and uh, Natex to a harder feature focus on uh, reliability. So there is some rework or redesign of the architecture of the system. One feature, one major feature is to try to um, establish some protection units. This means that uh, you want to separate the user and the kernel uh, land and make sure that uh, the user will not get raw access to the device or something like this, which is um, can be very dangerous in terms of security. And uh, as this next uh, big uh, challenge is to try to build a microkernel architecture. So I'm not an expert of the domain, but to what I understood, the, the microkernel philosophy is to try to reduce the maximum of features that can be run in the kernel, and then add services on top of uh, around it to provide all the what you expect from an operating system. So the only tasks that the uh, microkernel which will uh, address it was addressing different tasks, uh, giving access to memory and trying to synchronize the world, all the tasks and so on. So if you think about drivers or network tasks, they will not re run in the kernel environment. It will be done in a, in a user land. So I don't know if you look at this picture. So in, in case if somebody goes down and all the, soft, the network stack is going down, it's only a service which is uh, a, a defaulty. So the system should be aware that something is bad uh, over there and try to restart the service to make it available to others. So there is a process of uh, self-healing uh, system when you have some things which are unexpected 
we try to recover slowly from this and not uh, reset the system. So if you were at the presentation of uh, uh, one of my colleagues uh, yesterday in the embedded room, he explained something very similar but uh, for Linux uh, system. So you can have an idea about what is self-tolerance and uh, the way to, to make sure the system will behave uh, as expected. And if you, if for some reason, so you're losing the control of the system and it's not easy to, to get it fixed. You have the possibility to update it afterwards. So here comes the next feature, which is connectivity and device management and security. This is really a topic. <laughs> So th there is a lot of feature about uh, connectivity. So there is a lot of different protocols. The main contribution uh, from Samsung on uh, NetX is to add and um, be, if you compare to NetX, that hey, we have IPv6 support. So this bringing on new opportunities in terms of device-to-device uh, -device connectivities. So your IoTVT framework has been ported to it also and cloud feature and I will not go to back in detail so one of the mission of is to provide the device management framework to Tyson Ertis to update the device monitor the device so this is not yet over but uh, there are some effort security which is uh, really not my domain I really this is really something uh, very specific and the mostly to what I understood is done the most at the hardware level so um, let me introduce some one of the supported board by uh, Tyson RT, they are not so much, but this one is uh, the reference uh, board. Actually, this is a family of boards, so this one uh, is the one I use for the demonstration. I will show later. So it's an ARM4 core, and uh, it is, um, let's say, um, optimized for real time and, sec and uh, reliability. And, um, and uh, beside uh, the c main CPU, you have some units for uh, security. So there is some specific chip to, for providing security feature. So there is uh, some, if you compare to Raspberry Pi, that's not something very easy to compare, but something really cool if for the otherwise you have a lot of input to play with. So if you want to play with Tyson RT, you have also QMU support, which can be a, a good uh, way to get it started. And uh, otherwise, you can try to port to your favorite board. So let's go with, uh, if you boot the system, it will look like this. So you have a U boot uh, log on the left, and uh, then you have a shell when you can try to run different options, so different commands. So it's really inspired by uh, another operating system you already know. So if you now want to create your own application, well, no, first build the system, so you j we, all the code is uh, development, developed on GitHub, so you can get it uh, and uh, eventually uh, submit bugs and patches. And uh, you install the toolchain and in a couple of commands you configure the system and you are able to deploy it to, the, to your board. So next, if you want to create your own first application, there is an Hello World app. You can get uh, uh, use it as a template. So it's, there is no black magic. You will be able to use uh, the um, regular C uh, include files and try to build your application. Not all the function may be available. So in case one is missing, you either you try to find uh, an alternative one, or re-implement one, or eventually. Uh, Port something existing. So, if you want to exercise, you can try to create a, a socket uh, application. That's uh, we will be or port an existing Linux one. You see, it's the same. So, if you want to create an, a JavaScript application, the so first thing you need to do is to enable uh, IoT.js in the in the configuration of the Tizen RT, and then you have a IoTGS interpreter when you can lo load the JavaScript and execute them. And if you want to uh, make a um, standalone application, you just need to create a task that will run on the, on boot, and uh, you can. This is what I will show just now. So. If that's uh, the post one get uh, into Tizen RT, I wanted to use it uh, and get a uh, fast result, so I tried to make uh, this uh, little proof of concept demonstration. So I was trying to 
something which is trendy in the let's say IoT and so to try to collect the data from the environment and to exist if you can build something useful out, out of it to, to have a positive feedback on it. So the so first thing that we have to do is to get the, to know where we are and how can we proceed. So I have working on sensor just to trying to measure the quality of the hair and when I got this result, I can try to establish uh, a scenario. So to create the demonstration, I've been using an analog sensor. It's a, so you have to be careful because two sensors are working in 5 volt. My board is working on uh, 1.8 volt, so you have to make a level shifter and so on. And I created a JavaScript um, class that is just dealing with the sensor and just uh, um, producing event to reporting to the system. Next I wanted to want to send an alert to let's a radio so I'm not using internet on this, I'm using a, another network which is a LoRa network which is a low power low power um, radio. So but uh, the bandwidth is very limited but for my case it was okay so I use um, this uh, LoRa microchip uh, um, modem and uh, with a couple of commands through the serial ports you can try to connect to a network and send some some uh, value to the network so then you can get it back on the uh, internet uh, or web front end. Um, I think I can show I can show yeah so I recorded the video in case it was not working, but uh, I will just... So what I have here is uh, the devices, so the sensor is there. So this is my home city, Ren, and I'm using this uh, small antenna to the big one. And if I put some gas on the sensor, then there is a notification sound. You cannot hear it here. And then I'm receiving the, the, the data on this uh, big infrastructure. So I can show it again here. Um, but I will show you a different view. So, make oh. <coughs> okay. So let me just reset the device. So you boot is booking, booting. I'm just putting some configuration. Now, oh, it's very small. Let me. Um, so yes, can you see it? Yeah, maybe, maybe bigger. So here is I'm talking with my modem with T T X and R X uh, command. And uh, once I'm joined the network, I'm supposed to be accepted. Yes, that's pretty cool. And uh, just uh, showing some information, we don't really care for now. And uh, this air quality thread is updating the value of the, um, of the sensor. So I use this uh, lighter. And if it is getting above a threshold, <laughs> I'm <li> raising <laughs> alert. <laughs> and uh, I've been sent <laughs> just here <laughs> <laughs> the, the payload, which is, should be received on the other side, but maybe not in this room because there is a, probably a high run. So let me check. We don't. We never know. So here I'm connected to the something really new from uh, people I just uh, met yesterday. <laughs> so I. Uh, not yet receiving it, but uh, if you check uh, at the time, this was uh, just yesterday from uh, my hotel room. So I have the window open in my uh, in my in my room, and it was a bit freezing. But uh <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you have some questions during the Q and A, you can ask uh, for people from Brussels and uh, um, Belgium. Those people are doing uh, amazing things. <laughs> so let's go back to the. The presentation, uh, where is it? <laughs> uh, so, yes, yeah, this is an overview about my system, something I didn't show. Uh, 
is uh, okay, uh, we are able to send me notification to some antenna, but at the same time, uh, something that could be really useful is to get the position of the device. So, if, especially if it's a mobile, a mobile device, so I put my on a bike. This is not a finished project, as you see. <laughs> and uh, with, uh, with the phone, you can get the position. You can get the position in a different way using lower network. And I have a, a GPS on my phone, obviously. And uh, I'm using this as a server, and I will share the position to the to the DIY box, and uh, then I get uh, something more interesting to send back to the network. So here I'm running the IoTVT server, which is sharing the value of the position. And this side I'm running a, a client. So this is native code, no JavaScript, and it's discovering the resource on the network and uh, updated in uh, real time. So this is a um, this is IoTVT. Um, yeah, I didn't speak too much about it, but you will find some resources online. So I think I'm over now. So let's make a short summary. So Tizen, the big Tizen, you can see is based on Linux kernel. Tizen is something totally different. Some features of Tizen are ported to Tizen RT. And uh, it's open to developer. You can use it and uh, create application using native API or JavaScript, or eventually uh, port uh, some feature into the platform. And uh, there's a couple of tools, and uh, but I'm a common line user, so I didn't show them here. <laughs> so I think, yeah, so some references. All my demonstration are in my private uh, repository, but it's uh, really in a work in progress mode, so I will try to clean it up uh, for, for you in the future. And now uh, we have a, a couple of time for questions. Don't hesitate to ask. Yes, thank you. Yeah, what schedulers does your kernel support? Um, so if I go back to the question, was about FIFO, FIFO, yeah. FIFO is a scheduler of Nutex. Um, this is a, something I don't know if uh, we are aligned to this or if it's, it's something to be changed because there is this uh, new uh, microkernel architecture, so maybe some s a decision made by Notex developer could change. I, I don't know exactly. I need to check for giving you, and it could change in the future. So it's not something I cannot really give you uh, the answer you expect. Yeah. FIFO is the uh, one user on the Notex. I, I suppose it's the same currently. Okay. And just that schedule, you don't have layered schedules like, like other operating systems where you can run round robin with on some on some priorities or have an angle. Priority is supported, yeah. 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 So so if, uh, what kind of feature or in terms of scheduling do we have compared to other operating system? Um, I didn't really uh, investigate that part, so it would be difficult to give you uh, an accurate answer. But yes, there is a task and priority and preemption, that's probably the key feature. Leon? Nice talk. Uh, I'm just wondering, what is the long-term strategy for backward compatibility with Lutex, and how many patches have been backported from Tizen RT to Lutex so far? From Tizen to uh, to, to Netex. Uh, there was, there was, the question is of a relationship between Tizen RT and Netex, and in, in the long term, uh, Tizen RT developer will invest. Um, will uh, forward their patches to Nutex. Uh, to what I've seen today, because I cannot predict the future, there are uh, only a few patches on the Nutex. I, c I suspect that it will occur when, when the tiny ARA project will happen, but now, technically speaking, it's, uh, it's a fork. So in the future, probably, uh, for instance, board support can be something that will be really interesting to Nutex uh, developers. So Maybe people, some community will try to backport it. I cannot speak for Samsung. I don't know exactly the strategy. But in my case, I fixed some. Uh, there was a mistake in uh, some application, and uh, I send a, a patch to Netflix. But yes. Yes. Oh, I can unpack it, but we don't have the time. 
<laughs> so yes, I have this uh, main board. Yeah, what's inside the box? So I have this uh, main board, Arctic zero uh, five five S. I have uh, this. Uh, I can unpack it now. <laughs> this uh, a module called uh, Lorabi. It's uh, made by. Uh, a Deutsche company, uh, no, not Netherlands, no, Deutsche. So they are shipping this uh, transceiver from microchip. So with the antenna, it's a uh, XB factor, but I'm not using uh, the socket, so I made the Y by myself. I have the sensor. I'm also using a, a pretty cool uh, device, which is a software oscilloscope. I'm I'm using this because uh, there is a, a, a 5 and 3 volt uh, uh, power uh, output and uh, for debugging it's also. And I have this uh, buzzer for the sound, uh, LED for the showing and uh, other stuff I didn't uh, show today. But uh, that's uh, just a prototype I would probably uh, <laughs> and, uh, Dismantle it as soon as I'm back home. <laughs> All right. Thank so, well over. Thank you very much.